Hey, let's dive into Logic Pro X. Uh, Logic Pro X was my first door. In a way, it was a great place to start. One good thing about Logic Pro X was and still is that at the time when I bought it, I paid for it and I have never ever needed to buy any updates for it. However, Logic Pro X has been updated several times during these years and a lot of great things have been added into it, like grid view and new instruments. What made me to move into Ableton Live was the workflow, but of course, you make your own judgment on what door is best for you and your workflow. So let's dive into Logic Pro X and see how it looks like and how it works. When you start Logic Pro X, it follows a similar approach to Pro Tools. It presents you with a dialog where you can either create a new project or load an existing one. The way Logic Pro X opens can be configured in the settings. However, let's focus on an overview of creating an empty project in the Logic Pro X. When you create an empty project, the first thing you'll see is the main view and a pop-up that prompts you to select the type of a track you want to create initially. You can create the following tracks in Logic Pro X. A software instrument track, an audio track, a drummer track, external MIDI track, or guitar or a bass track. Let's start by creating a software instrument track to get started. Now we find ourselves in the main view of Logic Pro X with one instrument track. Let's add an audio track alongside the instrument track. In a Logic Pro X main window you can see almost everything you need. Starting from the left you'll notice the library. The library displays different instruments when you have an instrument track selected. If you select an audio track, the library will show a selection of effects that you can add to the selected audio track. Next to it is the inspector, which you can open and close. The same applies to the library. You can open and close it to maximize your main view. The inspector provides details for the selected track, whether it's an audio track or an instrument track. You can also open the mixer within the main window or as a separate window similar to Pro Tools or as a secondary window like in Ableton Live. For now, let's close the mixer window. To browse content in Logic Pro X, you have several options, similar to browsing audio files in Pro Tools. Live loops in Logic Pro X is on the right hand side of the main window. You can drag and drop items onto an audio track. For browsing effects, you can use a pop-up menu, much like Pro Tools. You can go into the menu and add an effect. Adding a virtual instrument involves selecting an instrument track. You have two methods for doing this. You can choose the instrument from a pop-up menu similar to Pro Tools or you can explore the library to make your selection.
Choosing from the library includes the entire channel related configuration. If you prefer another method, simply select an instrument from the pop-up menu. For audio editing, you'll primarily use the audio editor accessible by double-clicking the audio section. The editor opens automatically and can be closed using the scissors icon in the menu or keyboard shortcut. Editing MIDI in Logic Pro X follows a similar process. Double-clicking on the instrument track opens the MIDI editor, where you use the pencil tool to start drawing MIDI notes. So we've taken a quick look at editing MIDI and audio in Logic Pro X. Lastly, the grid view in Logic Pro X is similar to Ableton Live Session View. You can drag and drop items into it or create a new content in it. This is the non-linear way of creating song ideas in Logic Pro X. In this mode, the linear approach is disabled and the grid takes control. From here you can control if the grid will have a control or the linear mode will have a control. So this was a very brief intro into Logic Pro X. Next we will dive into Studio One, so stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching and uh, remember to subscribe for the channel. Ciao.